راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن هذا كتاب الله روح قلوبنا خير الدروس تعلم القرآن بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين All praise is due to Allah, the Almighty, the Lord of the worlds and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions and his followers all until the day of judgment. I welcome you to this new lesson from the series of Tafsir at Zad Academy and we are continuing the Tafsir of the last uh, three ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah and we talked about their virtues and their importance and significance in Islam as they contain great favor upon Allah, upon the, 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 the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and upon the Prophet himself subhanahu alayhi salatu wasalam who actually was given this that uh, these ayahs were given to any prophet before him alayhim jami'an salawatullahi wasalam let's go into the meaning of these three ayahs the first one ayah 284 uh, says lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard so for allah is the dominion and the kingship of all what is in the heavens and the earth whether this is small or big and the uh, sustenance and the control of the affairs of these people uh, and creation is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is hidden from him because he is the sustainer, he is the owner, he is the one, the cherisher. So everything is under his control and part of his own dominion subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبْكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ So there was some discussion among the scholars of Islam regarding uh, or the tafsir regarding this ayah and uh, we already talked about how the Sahaba رضوان الله عليهم were distressed when this ayah was revealed and they were fearful uh, of Allah and uh, holding them accountable for uh, uh, the, the deeds that they do um, and the small deeds and even what uh, you know comes across uh, their own minds or just they only talk uh, talk within themselves about about anything and they they felt that if they, they if they do that they'll be held accountable it was it was uh, uh, a great burden upon them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that uh, followed this with by saying la yukallifu allah nafsan illa wus'aha allah does not ask a, a soul to carry a burden except what it can do beyond its ability and for it is what it attains what it uh, gets and against it what it earned uh, uh, and, and of course, if you know Arabic, we will come more about that, inshallah. But if you know Arabic, kasabat iktasabat. So normally in, in Arabic, any uh, word which has more letters, it has more meaning. So more letters meaning more, uh, meaning more meanings. That's, that's how the Arabic language is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave Muslims regarding doing uh, anything, you know, like like thinking of, of, of anything, uh, whatever you talk to yourself or have an idea within yourself, as long as it doesn't 
come to reality uh, unless you, you, you act upon it, then you're not going to be held accountable to it. Only whatever, what, whatever deeds you commit or you do, then, then you'll, be, you'll be held responsible for. And uh, in this regard, uh, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, the great companion and the uh, scholar of, of, of Quran, said uh, this uh, whispering uh, was something that the Muslims had no ability uh, to, 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 to carry. And then uh, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to the decision that for you is what you what you gain and against you is what you uh, earned whether this is in saying the, or, or action then things became easy and bearable for them in the hadith abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala ana said the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said inna allah tajawaza li an ummati ma waswasat bihi suduruha ma lam ta'mal aw تكلم. This hadith was reported by Al-Bukhari that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven uh, for my ummah whatever is whispering in their own chests, meaning whatever you talk to, your, to yourself about. Um, but, you know, there will not be, it will not be, you will not be uh, committed to it. You will not be uh, uh, charged. Uh, Unless you act upon it or you speak it, you, you, you speak with it. So uh, uh, you shall not, it's either, it's either you know, speaking or, or doing. So as long as this is only within yourself, then you'll not be held responsible for any ideas that come across your mind or come to your heart or whisper within, within your, uh, your, your chest. It's not, you're not going to be held uh, 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 responsible for it. In the two sahihs, meaning in the two books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, قَالَ اللَّهُ إِذَا هَمَّ عَبْدِي بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَا تَكْتُبُوهَا عَلَيْهِ This is hadith Al-Qudsi. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when my servant intends to do a bad deed, then addressing the angels, do not write it against him uh, unless he, he does it. So uh, only the idea or just the mere intention to do it is not going to be held against the person. فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ So maghfira, maghfira is to cover the, the sin and to pardon a person for it. So it's taken from the word mighfar. Mighfar is w like uh, a helmet where a person, the, the, the warrior, would put it on his head to protect uh, him from uh, arrows. And then it is a cover for the head and it's a protector as well. So uh, uh, that's why maghfira is to cover and to pardon at the same time. وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ So he can punish anyone for uh, whomever he, uh, he, he will, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for, for their sins or mistakes uh, or, or, or uh, evil doing, uh, which is, uh, which if, it's, if it's not forgiven uh, or if it's not uh, really uh, expiated by something, then obviously Allah can, can punish them if he wills for it. Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. And Allah has a power over everything because everything is under his control, under his will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing uh, goes against his will. Uh, as Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعْجِزَهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ In Surah Fatir, Allah, there is none, uh, nothing that uh, uh, prevents or uh, be an obstacle, uh, uh, anything um, in the heavens or the earth that can prevent uh, uh, the will uh, or uh, would be in the way of uh, uh, what Allah wants to, uh, to do, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is uh, how the tafsir of the ayah, uh, uh, first ayah comes. And what we can learn from this ayah, 
the benefit here is the uh, uh, responsibility and it is a duty to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uluhiyya and in ibadah is to single him out in the oneness of divinity and worship subhanahu wa ta'ala because when you say Rabbana or Rabbi obviously you are submitting, you are admitting the rububiyyah and uh, the uh, uh, oneness of lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which entails the uluhiyya, the oneness of divinity uh, for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha nasu i'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum. O people, worship uh, your Lord who created you and those before you. Meaning that he deserves this. He needs, uh, you need to, d- to, to give him his, his right by worshiping him because he's your Lord. He created you and those before you. So he actually made rububiyya or the oneness of lordship which is uh, resembled in, in creation uh, is a reason for ibadah. Uh, and, and makes it necessity, uh, necessary for ibadah. Uh, as Allah says in Surah An-Naml, أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ uh, Until the ayahs. So he started with, uh, uh, or uh, the one who created the heavens and the earth. And then after that he says, أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ Is there any God uh, besides Allah uh, that who, who, who did this? Because Allah went into saying the actions of, of Arab, the creation, the dominion, and the sustenance of the affairs of, uh, of the creation. And, and that can be done only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that is the case, then Allah should be singled out in worship and in divinity subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. Secondly, to affirm that the samawat are more than one, of course, because Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ مَنْ رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ السَّبْعَ Allah mentioned that in the glorious Qur'an and also in the Sunnah and the consensus uh, of, of scholars of Islam that the heavens are seven and this is clear, as we said, قُلْ مَنْ رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ السَّبْعِ وَرَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمِ As for earth, uh, earth came in the glorious Qur'an only in, in the singular. It did not come in the plural. There is no mention of al-aradin in the glorious Quran. However, in the Sunnah, uh, the, the, there is, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa taala said, even in the glorious Quran, Allah said, "الذي خلق السماوات الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن." He created seven uh, heavens and similar to them from earth, meaning in number, not in description, because the description of, of uh, Earth is different than the description and the, and the uh, shape and, 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 and so on uh, than, than the heavens. And that's why, but in Sunnah as well, مَنْ اقْتَطَعَ شِبْرًا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ طُوِّقْتَوَقَهُ اللَّهُ إِيَّاهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ سَبْعِ أَرَضِينَ If you uh, take um, unlawfully uh, one uh, finger span from uh, Earth, uh, uh, then Allah will... Uh, put it under your, uh, uh, around the neck uh, on the day of judgment in seven heavens, in seven earths, sorry, seven earths, meaning that it will be so bigger and you will not be able to, to bear that kind of punishment. So that's how uh, uh, the, uh, these are uh, the uh, important benefits taken from, from this ayah. If we go to the activity, uh, Allah says, وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبْكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ uh, So what is Allah warning against in this ayah? تُبْدُوا أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ So whether you make it apparent or conceal it, uh, what is Allah warning against? And secondly, what is the evidence that the earth, earths are seven? Earths <laughs> with S at the end. And finally, how would this ayah be an evidence for the oneness of divinity or uluhiyya? So these are the three uh, questions that I think 
uh, you'll find the answer so easily by going back to the lesson from this uh, video or going back to the, to the book, of course, and, uh, and get it from there. Until I see you, inshallah, in the next lesson, I leave you the Allah's care and protection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن هذا كتاب الله روح قلوبنا خير الدروس تعلم القرآن بشرى ننازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان